Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for making it this early uh, in the morning. I hope to see people in handcuffs being dragged down from the breakfast table, but uh, no joy. So um, today, it's all about action planning. It's all about uh, putting things, or putting the ideas that you've heard in the last one and a half days into some kind of action plan. And we, the RSPO Secretariat, and I'm sure the board does as well, would really appreciate if the action plans, as Victor described, is something that can be implemented within a certain time frame. And hopefully, the action plans is something that it can be implemented by yourselves. Um, yes, the RSPO Secretariat has action plans, the board has action plans, but we'd like to know what other things are going out there, what other uh, activities or actions that can have traction, that can help support the RSPO, and that's something that uh, we would be truly grateful for. Uh, going around yesterday, there was a multitude of ideas, uh, a lot of energy, I see, and I, it would be a shame if all, for all that to be have been lost uh, in the space somewhere. So if we can put all those, the key ones, the things that you really think can propel us further, faster as the RSPO, then we would be very grateful. And at the end of the day, I'm sure all of us will benefit. So I will leave it there for now. And I hope that uh, you'll put all your energies into today. And I'm sure we can, at the end of the day, uh, give us all a good uh, clap of congratulations to all of us for doing a good job. So uh, I'll hand this back to Victor. And I did a bad job of not translating all that to Bahasa. And I'm not going to embarrass myself or the Bahasa Indonesia. So I let Victor try to consolidate what I just said. <laughs> Thank you. Um, idenya adalah bahwa RSPO Sekretariat ada di sini, tapi Anda, Bapak-Bapak dan Ibu-Ibu, adalah orang yang juga akan melakukan sesuatu di luar, di luar hanya RSPO Sekretariat. Bukan berarti bahwa RSPO Sekretariat nggak punya action plan. Sudah ada action plan. Justru sekarang adalah waktunya Bapak dan Ibu yang menjadi anggota RSPO melakukan sesuatu. Apa action Anda untuk bisa mengimplementasi PNC ini? Oke? Okay? So, ini adalah platform yang akan kita pakai. Your action. Action Anda. Oke? Okay? I would like to invite two gentlemen. Saya akan meminta uh, mengundang dua orang. Yang pertama adalah Pak Bungaran Sarage dan Pak Chandran to come forward berdua-duanya katanya gitu silahkan kemudian menentukan sendiri pak ya bagaimana memulai prosesnya so I would like to the two of you to dance about the floor <laughs> you start <laughs> oke okay. selamat pagi selam, salam sejahtera and good morning to all of you you know I have been asked by many, many people over the last two days. Many questions I thought they would have already understood after 10 years. But unfortunately, that is not the case. I, when I walked in this morning to the hall and I saw this lovely face of our director for the Indonesian office, they see. And I thought, you know, when I look around over the last two days, and I ve see very many female faces, I believe the future for RSPO is going to be stronger and stronger because we need the feminine touch. Simply because I'm a planter. I was a planter. And in the plantation industry, there was hardly any women, except at the lowest rung of the workforce as workers. It was a dangerous job. 
therefore women was not recruited as staff or at the executive level it is changing slowly changing but in the rspo context i see a whole lot of women who play a very very important role today whether they are from the communities from the ngos or from various other sectors of the industry let me just reflect for the benefit of those who are not familiar with this process when we started the whole process as daryl alluded to prior to rt1 that was in august 2003 exactly 10 years ago in kuala lumpur the first meeting was held here in medan in the iopri and i believe ibu rosdiana was here the secretary general of the ministry of agriculture for indonesia i remember dr delima was initiated it but the whole process was initiated by the agricultural attache to the dutch embassy in uh, jakarta franz klassen who today is the ceo of the dutch margarine and product board or mbo in uh, uh, in holland now what was the concern for organizing that first seminar here i uh, i just want you to go back in history and think about this it was 97 98 that was the year when the whole of southeast asia literally was under haze that was the year when the world caught fire you can google it the whole of western australia i remember was 2 to 3 million hectares was burnt bush fires the california was in fire huge swaths of land in russia was on fire so in sumatra we had peat fires haze the first major haze problem confronted singapore malaysia southern thailand even to the extent of sabah and sarawak that's when the world woke up and said what is the cause of these fires and unfortunately or fortunately it was palm oil hence the initiatives by the ngos especially by wwf and the supply chain people to initiate a forum it was also the year if you remember the height of the asian financial crisis just like you had the western financial crisis of 2008 and 2009 it was also the year when the currencies in southeast asia tumbled i remember coming here 98 to bali for the 150th anniversary of introduction of oil palms into indonesia that was in 98 at the conference there and the rupiah was 17500 to a us dollar so that was a trigger point it was also the year when we had a serious contamination of palm oil which arrived in rotterdam hence the initiative by the dutch agricultural attache to organize a seminar to address quality food safety and sustainability but he was most happy after that we started the rspo process so the message that I have is at the rt1 conference in my concluding remarks i did say that we have now decided to sleep with the ngos <laughs> but we have different dreams after 10 years i am glad to say we have formed very strong partnerships with the ngo movement at the company level at the rspo level and this has been one of the greatest success stories of any commodity alliance out there this partnership and look at the partnerships that has been formed and look at it where we have transformed the whole concept of the industry through this partnerships 
yes there is still lack of trust there is still criticisms but i think we need to understand this will always be there and the rspo itself is in a transformation mode don't forget that it is not the market alone the rspo itself even the rspo secretariat is in a transformation mode and it takes time nothing is perfect in this world but the hope is this the young people who are here today i hope you will become the champions of the future it's time for people like me to fade away you know it's for the young people like you who should be taking on the challenge and taking rspo to a much greater level with that i thank you good morning everybody i was asked in on the spot just a few minutes ago to to say something here i'm glad that pat chandran already explained what i want to explain so maybe i would like to make a kind of uh, uh, a few word to my indonesian friend and i hope it will uh, also benefit not indonesian friend here because the message is just the same and i would like to speak in bahasa indonesia i will be the translator this time <laughs> yeah pak bapak bapak dan ibu yang peserta dari indonesia saya ini orang akademisi pada dasarnya. Tapi saya beruntung menjadi menteri pertanian pada saat permulaan dari RSPO ini dibentuk. Saya adalah orang yang uh, I am one of the most fortunate person in this planet because maybe there is a mission uh, in that aspect that when Our SPO was born I was the minister of agriculture of Indonesia Sebagai seorang akademisi sebelum saya menteri sudah banyak belajar mengenai pembangunan yang berkelanjutan tapi itu hanya banyak dalam diskusi akademis As an academician I learned a lot about um, sustainable uh, development but only in discussions only in the chatting of academics ketika saya menjadi menteri saya mau mencoba melaksanakan pembangunan berkelanjutan itu di bidang pertanian tapi susah luar biasa as a minister um, i try to implement the sustainable development in the ministry of agriculture and it is it was such a tremendous effort Salah satu kesulitan pada saat itu adalah soal paradigma. Bahwa paradigma pada saat itu adalah paradigma untuk membangun, bukan paradigma untuk konservasi. The, at that current uh, condition, uh, the, uh, the paradigm, that, the, the biggest challenge is the paradigm. The paradigm, the existing paradigm at that moment is to develop rather than to preserve, rather than to conserve. Tapi buat saya, saya pikir pembangunan dan konservasi harus digabungkan, tidak boleh tidak. But for me, the paradigm of development should coexist, should live together with conservation. Saya menjelaskan itu di departemen saya dengan susah hati, dengan susah payah, apalagi untuk melaksanakannya. I explained this concept in my department and it was such a difficult challenge Think, let alone talking to anybody else Tiba-tiba datang orang Belanda <laughs> All of a sudden comes the Dutch Namanya Mr. Jan 
Kiss. The name is Jan Kiss. Dengan kawan-kawannya. With his friends. Pada saat itu mau mempersiapkan untuk RSPO dan mau bikin pertemuan di Jakarta. At that moment he asked for having a meeting on his RSPO and want to have a meeting in Jakarta. Dan mengundang saya untuk menjadi pembicara. And invited me to be the speaker. Dan saya dengan senang hati menerimanya. Gladly received. Jangan-jangan itu adalah level menteri yang pertama yang diundang oleh RSPO untuk berbicara di pertemuannya. And that was the minister level, the first minister level to talk in in RSPO meeting. Dan pada saat itu saya merasakan ini adalah kesempatan yang luar biasa dan saya suka kepada ide itu. I thought at that moment this is such a wonderful uh, situation and I really want to talk in that set, uh, in that conference. Dan saya menjanji berjanji akan membantu 100%. And I promise to help 100% to RSPO. Kenapa saya bantu RSPO pada saat itu sebagai Minister of Agriculture? Kenapa uh, why am I uh, helping RSPO as a Minister of Agriculture? Pada saat itu ide pembangunan selalu harus dimulai oleh pemerintah. Begitulah harapan di negeri kita. At that moment in this country everything should start from the ministry level. Tetapi, or the government level, sorry. Tetapi ini datang yang bukan pemerintah mau melaksanakan ide ide pembangunan. But this one comes not from the government officers and yet talking about development. Jadi ini menjadi pendidikan buat bangsa saya bahwa pembangunan itu bukan hanya oleh pemerintah dan kalau boleh lebih banyak yang bukan pemerintah sebagai inisiator dari pembangunan. And that is a new thing. So the initiator of development shouldn't be from the government side. It should also from other than non-government, um, other than uh, other institution. And he wishes that more initiatives like that coming not from a government uh, perspective towards the development. Dan yang saya suka juga pada saat itu bahwa permulaan RSPO itu bukan hanya oleh bisnis, tetapi oleh NGO dan And juga what? oleh bank. Dan juga oleh saintis yang bukan government tapi multi stakeholder ini menurut saya suatu hal yang luar biasa dan yang pertama sekali. And what excited me by that time is the notion that within the RSPO it's not only business but also academician and even more NGOs and all other institutions which is non government and this is the first time ever. And that excited for Pabungaran. And that's the reason why I support it. Uh, jadi RSPO itu buat saya itu adalah suatu uh, suatu model. Uh, uh, maksud saya RSPO itu sudah memulai suatu model bagaimana untuk membangun, tapi spesifik untuk satu komoditi. Cuman sebenarnya Cara ini bisa juga untuk komoditi yang lain. So RSPO created a model to uh, conceptualize the development or to, the, to create development only for one commodity. And in which case it could be also designed or being the model for other commodities. Lantas saya mau masuk kepada action atau apa yang terjadi di Indonesia pada saat itu. I will I would like to tell about what actions what happened in Indonesia by that time. Pada masa itu Indonesia baru masih keluar dari krisis moneter Asia. By that time Indonesia just relieved from uh, the monetary crisis. Pemerintah tidak punya banyak uang. The government didn't have money. Oleh karena itu Suka tidak suka, terpaksa kita mengatakan kalau mau membangun jangan harapkan pemerintah, tapi masyarakat harus membangun. Therefore, we say to everyone, if you want to talk about development, don't depend on government. We don't have money. So, if you want to develop, go 
everyone should should create development. Dan pada saat itu yang pertama sekali datang kepada saya adalah justru orang-orang dari kelapa sawit. And at that moment, the people who are coming to me as a minister are people from palm oil. Palm oilnya adalah yang besar dan juga yang kecil. The big as well as the small palm oil industry. Pada tahun 2000 waktu saya jadi menteri, baru hanya ada 2 juta hektar sawit di Indonesia. Itu adalah hasil pembangunan selama 100 tahun. By that moment uh, in 2000, uh, it's only 2 million hectares uh, palm oil in Indonesia and that is the development of 100 years. Tapi dalam waktu kurang dari lima tahun, dari tahun 2000 ke tahun 2004, waktu saya jadi menteri, perkembangan sawit di Indonesia berkembang dari 2 juta hektar menjadi 4 juta hektar. In four years time, 2000 uh, to 2004, when I become a minister, the development is from 2 million to 4 million hectares. Itu artinya 100% dalam empat setengah tahun. That means 100% in four and a half year. Kalau 100% dari 200 ke 400, itu biasa saja. Tapi kalau dari 2 juta ke 4 juta, it is, itu adalah revolusi. If, if, if it is a development from 100 to 100, it's easy. But talking about 2 million to 4 million, is such a huge number. Dan itu melulu inisiatif daripada rakyat. Pemerintah sangat minimum sekali. That is the initiative from the people, not the government. The government is only on the policy side. Namanya revolusi. That is revolution. Banyak terjadi di sana yang baik dan yang kurang baik. There are a lot of good ones and bad ones. Yang buruknya itu adalah kerusakan lingkungan. The bad things happen was the, dis, uh, the destruction of nature. Revolusi itu masih jalan di Indonesia sampai sekarang. That revolution still exists until now in Indonesia. Dari 4 juta ke 9 juta. From 4 million to 9 million. Dari 2004 ke 2013. From 2004 until 2013 now. Kebaikan banyak terjadi, tapi keburukan juga banyak terjadi. Good things are happening. But there are a lot of also bad things happening. Ya. Kita beruntung sudah memulai RSBO jauh-jauh pada awal tahun 2000. We are very lucky to have it started the RSBO from 2000. Hal-hal yang baik dari revolusi itu akan kita pelihara dan hal-hal yang kurang baik itu harus kita perbaiki dan RSBO mempunyai peranan yang penting untuk ini. The good things we need to maintain or in develop, but the bad things we need to really limit it or even uh, omit it. And the RSPO has a big role in making that happen. RSPO, kita ini multi-stakeholder, nggak mudah. RSPO, we are multi-stakeholders, not easy. Oleh karena itu, kita harus mempunyai kesabaran dalam berkomunikasi satu sama lain. Therefore, we need to have a media, uh, a, a place for us to communicate. Kita datang dari budaya yang berbeda-beda. We are coming from different cultures. Oleh karena itu, sangat dibutuhkan kesabaran. We need patient. Saya yakin dari Indonesia, seperti yang dikatakan oleh Menteri, Wakil Menteri Perdagangan, Dua hari yang lalu, orang Indonesia tidak masalah lagi sudah komit untuk sustainability. I think Indonesian is uh, there is no problem. We commit to sustainability. Tapi karena Indonesia itu masih memang negara yang baru membangun, orang Indonesia membutuhkan waktu dan fleksibilitas untuk mencapai peningkatan dalam usaha sustainability itu. But Indonesia is new in the concept of development and it requires a lot of time to grow from what it is now to understand into the level what is sustainability. 
kalau tidak ada kesabaran dari non Indonesia maka Indonesia akan kesulitan mengikuti usaha pembangunan yang berkelanjutan itu. If we don't have patient Indonesian then we'll have difficulties in following the sustainable development concept. Dan yang rugi kita semuanya sebab dia adalah produser terbesar di dunia. And uh, the damage will be in in ours in all of us because Indonesia now is the largest producer of the palm oil. Dan itu juga alasan saya kenapa saya mau ikut di RSPO. Saya mau membantu RSPO untuk melihat dunia nyata. Kita komit kepada sustainability, tapi kita harus ada kesabaran. Hari ini harus lebih baik dari hari yang kemarin, dan hari besok harus lebih baik dari situ. Prinsip itu harus kita pahami bersama-sama. Kalau mau sustainability itu, bisa kita capai nanti paling sedikit di bidang kelapa sawit. Therefore, why I help and as support. Pak Bungaran saya support RSPO, because um, the 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 value is we have to be better today than the past, and even the future should be a lot better than we have to do now. So therefore, I will always support the RSPO in the whole process because I want to see that happen. Terima kasih. Um, there is one reflection I would like you to reflect upon. I just want you to ask yourself this question. If there was no RSPO, where would we be today? If there was no RSPO, where would we be? Today. Pertanyaan Pak Chandran, refleksi Pak Chandran hanya satu. Kalau tidak ada RSPO, mau kaya apa kita? And over the last two days, I have learned something. It is the small players within the RSPO who are looking for guidance, who are looking for assistance, who are looking for the way forward. Whether they be small holders, small growers, even small consumer goods manufacturers, thousands of them out there. The NGOs, the small NGOs, the unorganized NGOs, and of course the communities. And I think this is an area which RSPO has got to focus upon, and I think this is a challenge we all face. Because in case you didn't know, more than 60% of the palm oil that is produced in the world is from the smallholder sector. And therefore, I think our focus going forward has to be on the word small, not big. We, don't, we are not a capitalistic organization. Let's make that very, very clear. You know? That is the strength of the RSPO, and we need to emphasize that. Thank you. Um, Pak Chandran bilang bahwa fokus dari RSPO bukan lagi tentang kebesaran, tapi justru ke, 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 ke kecil, ke arah yang kecil. Uh, usaha kecil, uh, growers kecil, uh, bahkan produser-produser uh, rumah tangga, produser-produser kecil, LSM-LSM kecil yang mungkin belum terorganisir. Padahal 60% dari pengguna Uh, 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 kontributor terbesar 60% kontributor di RSPO justru datang dari lembaga-lembaga yang kecil ini small growers dan segala macam nah karena itu fokus dari RSPO bukan, dan juga RSPO bukanlah kapitalistis justru kita harus fokus mulai fokus kepada yang kecil, small holders karena itu saat kita mulai melakukan action mari kita sama-sama mikirkan ke depan apa yang akan dilakukan dengan the small holders ini. Ya, Pak? Ladies and gentlemen, let us check our time. Let us check our time. Okay? We will have, at my watch, it's 9.25.
we have to finish all the action planning at 15 to 11. 15 to 11. Are you with me? Okay? Now, you see all those flip charts. Waktu kita hanya sampai jam 11 kurang seperapat. 15 menit menuju jam 11. Okay? 10.45. Jadi, dari jam saya yang 9.25, Anda lihat flip chart yang ada, ada kertas, we have paper here, what you do seperti biasa, ambil ballpen, tuliskan rencana aksi Anda, pergi ke flip chart, klik di flip chartnya, dan siapa inisiatornya, tinggal di situ. Stay there. So what you do is go to the center, Make that one action plan or action area. Move to the flip chart. Clip this paper. Stay there. Don't go around. Okay? Then anybody who sees, we, me and Gail, we will go around and ask you to read the title only. When everybody sees, I want to go to that particular action, you go to that particular flip charge, work together. You see on the screen, I need the screen. You don't need to see my back. <laughs> it's blue now. <laughs> yes. So, what is the topic? Okay, what is the topic? Who are the participants, name and in institutions, and stakeholder group, tulis nama, organisasinya apa, uh, stakeholder groupnya apa, lalu, what is your goal? Uh, when do you want this to happen? Lalu buat milestone-nya apa, kapan, siapa orangnya, who do you need the support from? Butuh bantuan apa? Okay? Along that line, along that line, talk with your friends, work it out. If you know there are some people you need to be involved in your action plan, ask somebody to grab them, bring them in. The way Daryl said, handcuff them. <laughs> okay? Handcuff them, bring them in. Write down together, work together, see what you can do. Even if it is only one initiative next week, that's good enough. Even for one month later that you will do certain thing, one thing, it's good enough. What will you do? What will you do? Okay? Are you with me? Jadi bapak-bapak, ambil kertasnya, pergi ke sini, menuju langsung ke kertas flip chart, tulis uh, rencananya. Saya dan Ibu Gail akan keliling untuk minta bapak membacakan saja. Teman-teman yang mendengarkan action-action nanti, kalau senang, langsung ke flip chart tadi. Jadi Bapak yang membacakan flip chart, jangan pergi kemana-mana. Stay the, tinggal di flip chartnya. Okay? Jadi nggak hilang. Nah, yang lain datang. Kalau Bapak minta, aduh seharusnya ada teman dari sana yang ikutan dengan kita, minta tolong teman, panggil teman itu, tarik dia ke flip chart kita, buat rencana sama-sama. Okay, now, again the time. Let's check the time. Now it's 9.30, 9.30, waktu kita hanya 1 jam 45 menit. Okay, 1 hour 45 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be precise on time. We cannot say, I will take it a longer time. Okay? That we can make sure that it's not food versus fuel, but food and fuel. Adrian, I see you there. We're inviting as many people that attended yesterday or that would like to be part of this new endeavor to assemble right here. Jadi saya mengundang para peserta pada kelompok kemarin, termasuk ini belum, tapi mudah-mudahan bisa hadir juga untuk bioenergi dan biomasa supaya gapnya yang masih di PNC terhadap energi bisa ditutup dan juga kita bisa menyatakan 
makanan maupun energi bukan makanan uh, melawan energi. Jan Martin Dross, Solidaridad. We have an action point to support independent smallholders to improve their yields and income with lower social and environmental impact. I will be um, at the back, close to the coffee. Now, this is what we are going to do. We will ask you, we will flash the, what you call the list of um, action plans, titles, uh, on the screen soon. What I want you to do is to make a line according to the numbers here for the initiator of the action plan. What each of you have is only 30 seconds 
to tell us what is exciting about the action plan, what is important about the action plan, including, including when you want to do it. Okay, and the name of the arena, you know, the name of the arena, of course. So you have to check uh, who you will be. Uh, hello. First of all, excuse my language because I'm not a uh, I'm not native uh, speaker of English, so maybe you'll not understand me very well. However, uh, uh, my group was discussing the government support uh, for uh, this great initiative of uh, RSPO, and uh, what is really interesting here that uh, really uh, we have got already the government support. However, we need them to support us further uh, when it comes to uh, consumer education. Uh, especially in the export markets, like for example, I'm coming from Saudi Arabia. We didn't know much about uh, the RSPO until our clients started asking for, because we are oil refiners and uh, our clients started asking for RSPO oil. So we thought what is, uh, this initiative uh, is all about and we came here. This is our uh, first uh, round table and uh, we find it really exciting and uh, thank you for uh, everybody here. Thank you. Next is... Douglas, uh, oh, okay, clap for everybody, <laughs> sorry, thank you. Um, Ahmad Magrabi, oh. so who's, hold on, hold on, go all the way back up, Danar, ah. okay, uh, thank you for the time for me. Uh, I think it's very interesting to discuss about how to uh, increase the use of GSPO and how to get a, a premium price for GSPO. Uh, we know about it, uh, the using of GSPO in uh, manufacturing. Okay. Uh, and and the uh, action plan is uh, how the RSPO can educate and encourage the buyer and the uh, customer to how uh, the advantage using of the RSPO, GSPO and so uh, maybe uh, we can push the buyer to uh, buy the GSPO uh, uh, more and I think uh, the point the important is uh, how to, to get the uh, give the uh, some advertise ya. Jadi mungkin lebih banyak uh, bagaimana mempromosikan kelapa sawit yang sudah sustainability ini pada customer atau lebih utama lagi itu adalah kepada uh, prosesor customer good sehingga kemudian ini bisa diterima sebagai uh, produk yang bernilai lebih tinggi. Nah, kira-kira begitu. Terima kasih, thank you for yeah, it is to promotion. Thank you. Doug, that's your Good morning. Salamat pagi. My name is Doug Kress. I'm the coordinator of the Great Apes Survival Partnership, GRASP, which is the United Nations level conservation program for great apes and their habitat. GRASP was formed the same year that RSPO was formed. We're the same age. And this is the first year we've actually attended an RSPO meeting. That's a huge mistake on our part, and the United Nations needs to be much more engaged in the issues of sustainability and RSPO. That is why our action plan is raise United Nations level awareness of great ape conservation and sustainable palm oil through greater involvement of GRASP with RSPO. We have an action several action points that will occur in this year alone, in 2014, coming up, 2014, that would be designed to create more communication, more engagement, more promotion, 
more support of not just RSPO, but of sustainability at the United Nations level. At the United Nations, we often talk about sustainability, but we don't engage enough. And this includes not only in Asia, but in emerging markets in Africa as well. Great apes occur all the way across Central Africa and, of course, into Southeast Asia. We have a great deal in common, and our commitment is certainly to engage on a much higher level. Thank you. Yeah. Solidaridad. Good morning. Bon dia. Slamat pagi. Um, Solidaridad has uh, found out in its smallholder support program that for many independent smallholders, there's no business case for certification. Still, the standard is an important tool that we can use for education and for improved economic performance. Solidaridad has developed a um, benchmarking tool against sustainability standards for sugarcane. And we want to develop a similar tool for palm oil as well, test it in Latin America, and hopefully with your support in Southeast Asia as well. Um, it's a tool that allows farmers to check their individual performance, aggregate that on a group level, whether it's a cooperative, an ICS, or uh, the suppliers to a mill, and analyze those data to see which actions are needed at the individual farm level and at the group level to improve the performance. It's been proven to work for sugarcane. We want to make it work for palm oil as well. Thank you. Daniel May and Faroz. We found, we found that and created a small team where we want to set up uh, administratively easy database or tool to make available all the detailed products like C12 or SLE or SEA and whatever is available for such kind of product that consumer goods manufacturers can easily know where to source those products at mass balance and segregated quality. There we found that a small team, we will have the scope of the entire um, yeah, idea available until end of February and then we take it from there and develop a detailed working plan. Uh, Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi and uh, good morning. I'm Faros from uh, Emory Oleo Chemicals. Uh, as our name suggests, we are uh, oleo chems and derivatives uh, producer. Echoing uh, what that Daniel shared just now, we also feel that it's time to set up a specific task force on focusing on the derivatives and consumer goods manufacturers to advance uh, the uptake of sustainable derivatives. All right, thanks. Julia Majel. <laughs> okay, I'm not Julia Majail. She is the smallholder representative of the RSPO Secretariat, and she cleverly delegated this to me. I was in the group that was formed. I'm Dawn Robinson from ProForest. Uh, the topic was supporting smallholder certification. The action plan is about the goal of disseminating information to, um, to smallholders and people that work for them um, on the topic of getting certified. And the, the group discussed um, the, the importance of um, making sure that was available in the right languages for around the world and um, that it should be about appropriate material that was clear and easily accessible. And the plan is to do it this year. So the Secretariat is leading on this with the key actors being the smallholder working group and the invitation to anybody who's interested in this to form a part of a network to make sure that happens. All right. Different languages. Great. Uh, what's the name is? Faisal Farish? Good morning, I'm Faisal Parrish from Global Environment Center, also working under the framework of the ASEAN Peatland Forest Project. Our group, uh, Stop Fire and Haze, associated with oil palm plantations. We had a very good group, we had 35 participants, mainly from growers, a lot of good ideas. 
uh, basic agreement, we do need to stop all fire and haze associated with oil palm plantations. As Pak Chandra said at the beginning, that was the stimulus of creating RSPO 15 years ago. We still have that problem with us. We must stop that problem, and it's possible. Technically, it's easy to do it. Politically and otherwise, there are some barriers. The main issues at the moment are the land clearing and development of medium and small players, often around the larger players, so the larger players get blamed for starting it. So the actions we agreed, each RSPO plantation to enhance its work to prevent and control fires in and adjacent to its plantations, not only in the plantation, including the setup of fire danger rating signboards around each plantation and development of a fire prevention strategy for each plantation unit. We agreed that it would be good for nearby plantations to cooperate together, to share resources, to prevent and control fire. Uh, each plantation should develop a fire prevention strategy together with local stakeholders. Uh, it was agreed to enhance the cooperation with local governments and community to prevent fire, such as providing financial support for uh, Masharakat Paduli Api or village fire uh, control groups, provide support in, by way of equipment, incentives for zero burning, rewards for communities where there are no fires. It was also agreed it was important to create some mechanism to provide affordable land clearing equipment to bona fide local groups that want to open land and have appropriate approvals. This could be done through the large companies and maybe some subsidy from the government. Uh, finally, uh, it was agreed that uh, RSPO should support the development of pilot projects in selected districts in Sumatra and Kalimantan where the problem is greatest and that these pilot projects would be multi-stakeholder in nature but the RSPO members would take the lead in facilitating bringing the dialogue with the local government and local stakeholders and this could then act as a demonstration to show how it would be possible to reduce fire risk in the area. And finally, to facilitate this, uh, we requested that RSPO members provide plantation boundary maps so it's possible to identify suitable companies in different districts that could work together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Siebold, it's a good day. Sandra, Thank you. be prepared, uh, KB, KSABI, Wild Asia, things like that. Hello everyone. I'm speaking in name of well, I'm speaking in name of the Human Rights Working Group. Yesterday we tested our um, the products that are mentioned in our terms of reference to see whether these are really the products that the stakeholders of the RSPO want us to develop. We had a very good uh, discussion. Um, and especially uh, the growers were very clear in uh, what they uh, would like to get assisted from, from the RSPO to um, improve human rights performances. I will not name them all now, but some interesting one were um, the FBIC guidance that is needed with a more clear concept of what land and land tenure means. Um, also assistance in uh, the, in, to improve the, inform, sorry, to improve the performance of uh, certification bodies. And there's a need for social auditing um, guidance. Um, there was a special need for better monitoring. How can we monitor human rights and how can we track it on our plantations? Um, and the last one was to have better guidance on labor rights, especially related to the issue of child labor. K KSBI. Prepared by Thomas Frick. Baik, uh, selamat pagi untuk kita sekalian. Kami dari sosial NGO. Uh, di situ KSBI, sebenarnya KSBSI. Perkenalkan, nama saya Togar Marbun. Kenapa topik ini kami pilih? 
Karena topik tentang buruh sesuai yang kami pahami baru pada rontobel ini ada di diskusikan. Untuk rangkaian itu kami sangat apresiasi untuk forum RSPO kali ini. This is for the first time that uh, RSPO acknowledge and discuss about the concept, uh, the case of labor. Kita memahami bersama ya, bahwa keperlanjutan sebuah usaha tidak terlepas dari buruh dan pengusaha. We understand about the relationship between labor and uh, owners, I mean uh, company. Jadi tujuan utama kita buat task force ini sebagai ajang diskusi untuk kemudian bagaimana kita bisa ciptakan kondisi kerja yang lebih baik di masa depan. To create this task force is to become the medium for discussions between labor and companies. Dengan berbagai isu utama seperti uh, kebebasan berserikat, freedom lalu to, freedom to union, uh, bagaimana buruh anak dan buruh perempuan tidak dieksploiter uh, child labor and women labor uh, with the, and, uh, the exploitation of child labor and women yang kemudian bisa kita ciptakan perjanjian kerja bersama yang isinya berbagai hak-hak dari buruh uh, that creates a better agreement between company and labor terima kasih thank you Thomas Rick. Uh, I'm Thomas Fricke from PT STC Indonesia. Uh, we say uh, our company uh, selalu tersedia cangkang, um, which means we always provide uh, palm kernel shells. Um, our company has been pioneering the use of RSPO certified uh, biomass as a means of helping to uh, address deforestation uh, and resource degradation uh, in rural industries and other parts of Indonesia and how the, the RSPO and the palm oil industry can contribute more broadly uh, to sustainability and so we followed up a very energetic uh, meeting yesterday to uh, create a working group um, a number of the uh, uh, in uh, biomass and bioenergy specifically to really help uh, enhance and fulfill the promise of the RSPO PNC in the field of, uh, particularly in the field of energy, but also in more broadly. We have used today as a recruiting uh, tool for the new, the new members of the working group. And uh, uh, specifically what our tasks and interests are, are to compile the best practice knowledge um, uh, in this field, to promote policies at the local and national levels, and finally to develop an analytical and uh, assessment tools for um, plantations and mills. Try to speak loud and clear. The RSPO dispute settlement facility, building on a very constructive discussion yesterday, today coming together, growers, NGOs, other RSPO members, decided on four specific actions to assist growers and communities to avoid. Mitigate and resolve land disputes and other social disputes. Action number one is to streamline. To <laughs> <laughs> streamline the RSTOP interpretation with the requirements of successful land dispute settlement on the other hand. Three by two, Action number two, to assist growers in a shared community 
community of learning, a shared community of learning to strengthen capacity in growers, community in grower companies themselves to deal with these issues. So internal training, internal capacity building. Third action, assist local NGOs, local communities to be effective in negotiating solutions. Fourth action point, to assist and strengthen community mapping capacity and align those community maps with grower position state maps. Thank you very much. I was in a group dealing with uh, alternative uses for palm oil on peat, or alternative uses of palm oil plantations on peat. So, uh, in relation to criterion 4.3 of the principles and criteria, which is practices minimize and control erosion and degradation of soils. The issue is that if you have plantations on peat, you are facing subsidence of the soil, and we all know that most of the peatlands have their drainage base below sea level or river level. So at some stage you will reach the drainage limit and your plantations will be flooded. The RSPO principles, particularly guidance 4.3.5, says that before you reach that drainage limit, well before you reach that drainage limit, you need to reconsider whether you should replant palm oil or need to go into an alternative use. And you should have plans for this alternative use. This means that all growers now need to start preparing plans for rehabilitation of the peatlands to turn them into another sustainable use. And we looked at what are the options for this, what are the commercial options, because you can't turn everything back to jungle. What are the commercial uses of undrained peat, so re peat? And uh, the action points that we came up with was one, first of all we need to get guidance developed for doing drainability assessments. To assess where your drainage limit is so you can identify how many crops you are away from it. Secondly, uh, we need to uh, develop guidance on alternatives. But what alternatives are there? Well, there has already been research done by, for instance, the University Gajamada in uh, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, on a crop called Elipi Nut, or Tenka One. This is a crop that already has a market. For instance, Marx is using it in their chocolate. Uh, there is so an international trade chain on this, uh, on this species. In Indonesia, it is called Tenka One been used traditionally for centuries, creates a very nice oily butter. The oil has very high qualities also for the cosmetic industry but also as a food crop. Yes. So what we need is, as a, uh, is guidance on how to develop this and we also need companies to start piloting this on their peat plantations. And uh, we have found some companies already interested in doing this. For instance, uh, CPEF said, or oh, maybe we can put 10 hectares aside, start developing this, learn with it, and then share that knowledge and uh, in this way produce uh, the, or promote these alternatives. The third action point is that uh, to develop Tanker One on your palm oil plantation, you must be able to do that legally. In Indonesia, at the moment, it's not possible to plant anything else than palm oil in a palm oil plantation. So the legislation needs to be adjusted. The fourth action point is to develop a working group on this in the RSPO to help share the lessons and to help promote piloting of these alternatives. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Lucy. Are you okay? You need to stand maybe a little bit in the middle. So I can... <laughs> or I'm sure, no. It's a little bit louder enough for everybody. Okay? Is that okay? Good morning. I'm Jen Lucy from the Sensor Project. And we were talking about um, mechanisms for 
funding the Sensor Programme. The Sensor Programme will provide the scientific evidence base um, for the credibility of certification to ensure that it's really delivering on sustainability. This is absolutely necessary for the credibility of RSPO. For the users of palm oil, um, that it will, uh, that using certified palm oil uh, will be fulfilling their obligations to CSR. For growers, that the huge amount of effort and money that they are putting in to certifying their plantations is worthwhile and targeted effectively, and to build trust in consumers in sustainable palm oil. But we need funding and we need it imminently. The message we are receiving from potential funders is that they would like to contribute as part of a group and we need RSPO to facilitate this. But it's also important that the funding model that we uh, have uh, would protect the independence and credibility of the research. So we'd need a scientific panel and we need participation from stakeholders such as NGOs and growers uh, to ensure that the, they are, that the funding model we choose is acceptable um, and the results are credible. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Community-based monitoring of agrochemical poisoning. Um, I really can. I really can. <laughs> okay. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. You okay? Very good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Right, we continued our discussion from yesterday on the issue of pesticides. And today we were very happy that in the group we had uh, smallholders, we had uh, workers, NGOs, as well as growers. And the whole focus is to empower the communities to monitor the use of pesticides at the community level. And this will focus very much on the health dimension. Uh, because a lot of the trainings that are done is very much on how to manage and handle the chemical. But we are moving to a different aspect of how it will impact on the health of the workers and the smallholders where that is very little monitoring being done with them. And the program will be one of developing consciousness on the health effects and a daily monitoring by the sprayers themselves on what is the effect on their health so that at monthly meetings, the data will be collected as a feedback to both the industry and the smallholders on the kind of changes that need to be made in terms of increased health protection as well as reduction in the use of highly hazardous pesticides. And we will, in partnership, work with Solidarity Spring One and Sunweek the two organizations that are here in Indonesia. Thank you.